What's up, everyone? We are headed. <laughs> we are headed. Head, we're putting Ryan from the Horticall on the camera. We're headed to uh, Gotham Greens in Gowanus. It's at the top of a Whole Foods. It's this big hydroponics operation. It's a huge hydroponics it's gonna operation. Be rad. It's going to be rad. It's going to be epic. It's going to be horticultural. Uh, let's see how it is. So we are here, guys. Gotham Greens, as you can see, it's right above this Whole Foods. I'm running a little late. I'm not used to the New York pace of things, so I'm gonna turn this off and actually get up there right now. Ryan and I are a little lost. Finding a secret garden above Whole Foods. Yeah. I don't think people are too fond of us right now, but that's okay. <laughs> we do it for you. What's up, everyone? Kevin here from Epic Gardening. I'm here with Nicole from Gotham Greens. Hey, what's up? The marketing genius of Gotham Greens, among probably many other things, I would guess. That's very generous yeah. of you. Director of marketing. <laughs> I'm just building her to go up right off the bat. Here we go. Uh, we're here. This is a rooftop in Brooklyn, New York. I want to show you really quickly kind of what's going on. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of basil, a lot of lettuce, a lot of technology, a lot of awesome stuff to share. So we're kind of going to just walk through and show you how a commercial operation works at scale. I do a lot of stuff that shows you guys how to do like at home, which is what all I do. I don't really do commercial stuff. So even for me, this is really cool and I'm really excited to see like how they do this at scale because it can be challenging. Hydroponics is like very meticulous, very sort of science-based instead of working with the soil, uh, which is just a different discipline. So we're gonna totally. hear about it and I'm amped. So. Cool, and we're, we're currently standing in our 20,000 square foot rooftop greenhouse on top of Whole Foods in Guanus, Brooklyn. Yes. And this is our second facility. So we started back in 2011, mm -hmm. right here in Brooklyn, yep. um, built our first greenhouse in Greenpoint. And within about a month, had attracted customers like Whole Foods. That fast? Yeah, Dang. and um, started selling wholesale to some really high-end restaurants got uh, the wheels in motion, lots yeah. of traction, and realized there was an opportunity to kind of take this model and expand it. So this whole idea of being on top of a supermarket makes it so that our team can actually be harvesting in the morning, packaging on site, and then delivering the produce right down through the elevator, right to the retail store. Um, it's taking this concept and of food miles and converting it into food footsteps. Yeah, which yeah. is basically like what I talk about on the channel a lot is, is if you grow your own then you know exactly how it was grown and the food miles are zero. Yep. And then the challenge would be how do you scale, we'll get into this probably with the interview, right, is how do you scale that while not losing the local part, yep. which would be the only reason that you would do this yeah. or try to do this, you know exactly. what I mean? Like so, that's the problem you're trying to solve. Yeah, so urban agriculture, yeah. it doesn't make sense to be uh -huh. growing produce in New York City and then sending it to Chicago, it makes sense to yeah. have Because you're going to do that, you grow it in a farm. Might totally. as well just grow it in a farm and soil where exactly. there's actually land. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we're instead building greenhouses in yeah. the cities in which, you know, we're selling the produce to. So uh -huh. it's close to the end consumer. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get into like the nuts and bolts of this cool. and enjoy guys. All right. Well, we are here and the first step we figured why not start at the beginning of the plant's life, right? Yeah. With the process. So checking out the guys, nursery area. Check out the nursery. You guys use rock wool. Yep. Exclusively, so, right? We are, yeah, and the reason for that is just like very um, soft and the actual roots can grow down through the bottom yeah. and hold some moisture really well. So now we're at the actual nursery where all the plants start getting propagated. Um, how many varieties of plants? I see a lot of basil, but do you guys do other stuff? Yeah, so in this greenhouse in particular, we have tons of basil, yep. um, but we grow about 13 different types of lettuces, okay. a couple different types of herbs, and then we also have a basil series of salad dressings. Mm -hmm. So we have pesto as well as a couple of vegan and classic. I think it's really smart. If you're going to be growing all this stuff anyway, you might as well add some value and just sell an actual product yourself yeah. too. You know? Nothing more complementary to salad than yeah. salad dressing. Very true. So what do you guys do? Is Everything is in like each greenhouse house the processes are all in the greenhouse so you're starting and finishing everything in this location for this location exactly right? yep yeah. so each facility has a, a packing mm -hmm. location as well really maintaining very strong shelf life mm -hmm. um, most people know this but the traditional model of lettuces in the US is everything is grown in California actually do you know this grown in my hood uh, it's something like 80% right more it's like even higher more yeah. yes Mm, 92. 98. Is yeah. it 98% of lettuce is grown in the U.S. In, yeah, in according to the NRDC, 98% of lettuces are grown in California and Arizona. So I knew so, we were like the eighth largest economy, and most of a lot of that was agriculture. I did not know it was that level of. Yeah. That's crazy. So when you think about it, it's yeah. like you're growing these highly perishable greens in the desert. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then it irrigating. Especially them. because like I don't know, for us, Zone 10 beers. Like I've had three days of rain this year, and I've had three days of rain in New York 
this trip. It's been a really so, wet summer. For yeah, sure. for you, oh, it's yeah. been the exact opposite for us. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense, especially for like, if, I could see like potatoes or onions or like some sort of root cellar style crop, yep. which you wouldn't grow this way anyways. Yep. But like something like this, the, the model is so perfect for it. Yeah, particularly when you're just talking about something that's so highly perishable. Yeah. And then yeah. You know, you're selling it, you have like hundreds of contract farmers that yeah. are bringing it to a facility, then the whole, like, distributing it. It feels like distribution, because like farming used to be really centralized, right? And now it's started to go a little bit more decentralized with all these local farms, farmers markets. Like yep. my friend, uh, Stephen Cornett from Nature's Always Right, did, yep. a, did a video with him. I loved his video. Yeah, and like guys like that making like two, three grand a month, living very lean, but like living the life that they want. Yep. But then the problem becomes distribution. And even for him, like he's growing. Yep. And then his problem is like, okay, well now I have to be at the farmer's market all the time. Or like if I even wanted to scale up and make like maybe a little bit more money, you know, buy a house or something like that. How do I actually distribute? And then there's all these like weird conglomerates that start coming in. We're like, oh, we'll aggregate all the local farms together. And then there's like middlemen everywhere. And then something like this, at least for like some crops, like basil, lettuce, greens, highly perishable, like highly valuable. Yep. This makes a lot of sense. To me, this seems like the, the logical and, decision. You know, some people are using hydroponics also for like growing fruits and vegetables. Yep. More like uh, cucumbers and squashes. Yep. So yep. it's Tomatoes. definitely there's there's there are many ways of sustainable farming. Yeah. Um, but just when looking at like the water usage and the fact that you know, the long haul transportation, 40% of that is getting thrown out between California yeah. and New York City. Yeah. It really made sense for us to be actually building these farms in the city and then creating local jobs, yeah. you know, yeah. de delivering a fresher, better tasting product. So that was really the mindset when starting this company. All right, well, we are here in a different section. This is sort of like basil forest. This is most of the adults. Very aromatic over here. Basil, it smells amazing yeah. over here. It's actually, it's very tropical in here because like the climate is all intricately controlled by you guys. Yeah, and it's, exactly. And not even you guys, really, by robots and AI and automation, right? Yeah. Yeah. We still have growers that are of like course. creating yeah, of the course. algorithms, yeah. but yeah. There's a good amount of automation in here, and it's always around 75 degrees, about 70% humidity. Mm -hmm. um, and is that, so is it plant specific though? Or do you guys do like microclimates for different do, areas? Yeah, we do create uh -huh. microclimates. So, you know, right behind us, we're obviously looking at basil, but say in the butterhead lettuce region, you might see that the lights are not on and maybe temp's the fans- has gotta drop a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, fans exactly. up, temp, temp down. Totally. Yeah. And we're actually tailoring the nutrition per plant. Yes. So if you can see behind us, we actually have um, all of these channels that we're growing in. It's We're using an NFT yep. hydroponic system. Nutrient film technique, guys, which yep. we've done a couple of videos on. And yep. do you know like why, why NFT? I've seen a couple of other hydroponic farms, mostly Mostly NFT I've seen used for tomatoes and stuff like that too. Yep. But I've also seen for greens specifically and herbs, floating raft, like the yep. floating raft channels. Was mm -hmm. that something you guys tested at all or? We looked into it. Yeah. Certainly we knew that we wanted to do hydroponics yeah. uh, because it's super sustainable in the fact that it uses much less water. Way less soil. water, way more control, yeah, exactly. all that stuff. Um, but also, um, we can grow a lot more product within a small amount of space. Yeah. So, really, we chose this system because, um, as you can see behind us, we're in about a half acre size mm -hmm. greenhouse, and we're actually producing that of about a 10 acre soil based farm. We're so getting about 20, 20, 20 yeah. times the yield, and this is a, our, one of our smallest farms. Yeah. So, the larger ones are actually getting closer to 30 and 40 times the yield. Oh, really? Yeah. So, it actually, the multiplier scales with scale? Yes. Whoa. Yeah. Why is that? You have more efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, economies of scale. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So not only is the climate controlled, but like even up here, let me move the camera. If it gets too hot, there's shade curtains up here that'll turn on. Yeah. Right? So those are like a natural SPF for our plants. Mm -hmm. So they'll totally open up and they'll act as like a giant umbrella. Yep. Um, and also in the winter time, they help to keep the heat closer to the plants. So okay. overall, our whole company, we're committed to using 100% renewable electricity to power all of our farms. What are you guys using now? Like um, is it solar or? Solar, yeah. um, also some wind. And then whatever oh. we're not producing on site, we're buying off the grid. Okay, yep. got it. Yeah, because I was like, how are you guys gonna do wind and solar enough for this particular location on location? Yeah, so, so we're sort of offsetting a different location. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. But for us, it's really in our best interest to be sustainable and yeah. use as little energy as possible. But you also see kind of more warehouse style mm -hmm. hydroponic um, urban farms that rely upon yep. um, all LEDs. So yep. for us, the primary source of light and photosynthesis is the sun. Yeah, that's something I've thought about a lot because you see a lot of these, and I, don't, I have nothing against anyone trying to do really anything in sustainable farming, but yeah. I was thinking about it, and a lot of people say like, oh, hydroponics is the way of the future. It's like, yes, but also, 
maybe no, depending on the way that you approach it. You know totally. what I mean? So if you're not using the world's most free source of energy ever, <laughs> the yeah, sun. The sun. Like, Hydro works really well and it does not require lights. Exactly. Although you guys have, you guys are rocking uh, HPS yeah. high pressure sodium lights. Exactly. Uh, so these everywhere. Are in, these are in yeah. place. Um, we have sensors throughout the greenhouse that are taking in light levels, CO2, temperature, humidity. And we've actually programmed all of our computer control systems to turn equipment on and off depending on what it's feeding in the greenhouse. That was so, to me the crazy part. I was talking to Jackie and she was yeah. like, I thought that you guys had the climate, like windows going up and down, lights turning on and off. So like, oh no, it's like fans, the CO2, the, the shade cloth, everything is automated based on sensors. We have misting systems in the summer. Yeah. So when it's like really hot in the greenhouse, it's yeah. like 100 degrees and our, our greenhouse team is yeah. Sweating. definitely <laughs> very warm. They're dying. Yeah, you will see that they're like really happily underneath the misting system, uh -huh. um, which helps to add a little bit of moisture to the air yeah. and bring down the overall Just hanging out. Yeah. yeah. So lots of technology to really help us create this perfect growing conditions. Mm -hmm. Also, our growers can, can control all of it on their phones. Really? Yeah, so earlier this summer, I was at um, a Mets game. Uh -huh. We sell to the stadium, so okay. we went out there with some of the chefs, nice. and um, I was there with our grower, and all of a sudden, his phone started going off. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, we just got here off the A train. Something's going wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just got here, we're gonna have to turn around. And he was like, no, I got this. And he literally yeah. just went on his phone, disengaged, um, you know, one of the, the windows on the farm, also messed with one of the channels and was able to solve it without even having to uh, leave his seat. That's so, so nice. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's cool to just see how, you know, the um, technology can really help to, yeah. of course you need farmers. Um, you do. But it's also. Do you think in 10 years you'll need farmers though? Or like I 20 do. years? I do. I mean, I, I think it's awesome to see like all these other forms of urban farming coming into play. Yeah. In the big picture, like we still consider our competitors to be the, the farms out in California. Yeah. That we're competing Like proper on. farms. Yeah. The soil classic based, definition of a farm. Soil based farms. Don't say farms. Hey, I put farms. the air quotes. <laughs> I put the air quotes. It's, um, you know what I meant. <laughs> so yeah. But in, in the big picture, like our competitors are these farms that are shipping their product yeah. across the country. Yeah. Um, so we're really focused on just trying to, to do this in the most sustainable way on a mm -hmm. commercial scale. It feels like once you get enough scale for you, your model, yeah. then they won't be your competitors anymore though. Do you know what I mean? Like at some point there will be an inflection point at which you can offer it at a price that they can't and it doesn't make sense for them to ship it. Yeah. And so then everyone, there's gonna be some weird point where everyone switches to you. Not so, you or, or you ba you type models, you know yeah. what I mean? Like people like I mean, you guys. I have to say, um, we're really careful not to say that like this is the form of farming that's gonna replace all of the right, farms. Yeah. That's, it's, that is it's not, not gonna, it's not true at all. And it's also yeah. just not our narrative. Yeah. Um, we really think that this form of farming has a, a role to play in yeah. like more sustainable and equitable food systems. Yeah. Um, it does really well with lettuces and herbs as you're seeing. Right. Um, yeah, it's not gonna be, you're not gonna be popping onions out of here. Exactly. Or soon. fruit yeah. trees um, yeah. or proteins. You know, there are certainly limitations. Yeah. Um, but it makes sense to grow these highly perishable greens and herbs. Yeah, highly and perishable, highly like saleable too, like very yeah. valuable. Greens. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, we're we're rounding it out, and it's time to eat because I didn't know this before I got here, but Gotham Greens actually makes products besides just selling wholesale, which is a really cool model. So what, what do we have here? Yeah, so we have our Tropicana Green Leaf mm -hmm. um, and our Gourmet Medley. Nice. Um, so the Medley is kind of a combination of different greens. Don't mind my fingers here. There's a red oak. We're family here. Yeah, so why don't we just kind of break in? We yeah. also have a line of pestos and salad dressings. Vegan pesto. Wah, wah. Spicy pesto. Spicy. Um, and so you guys sell this to Whole Foods in a bunch of different places? Yeah, or? Whole Foods, Fresh Direct. Um, so we're active in the Northeast and Midwest. Okay. So we have three farms in New York City, one in Chicago, and we're in the process of expanding to a bunch of cities across yep. the country. Yeah, because um, then you're scaling, you're scaling local like we were talking about, Yeah, right? totally. Yeah. So now that we've proven this model on a commercial scale in New York and Chicago, yeah. we're getting ready to bring it to Baltimore. Okay. We just announced a new project, uh, over 100,000 square foot greenhouse on wow. the site of the old Bethlehem steel mill. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. Which yeah. is cool because, as we know as soil gardeners, you're not growing in the soil in a steel mill almost ever. Yeah. Like heavy metals, all that stuff, like you're never gonna do an urban farm there, but you can put some risers up, do an NFT system, and just scale hydroponics. Totally. And it's also about just bringing local jobs there. So yeah. it's an area that has faces a ton of 
really high levels of unemployment. Mm -hmm. um, so underused workforce, kind of creating these green collar jobs. Yeah, it's gonna be. Oh, great. hey, yeah. Yeah. see what I did there? Who made that up? Did you yeah. make that up nah, just now? Just that, that was our CEO of Raj. <laughs> That's smart. It's trademarked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you heard it here first. I, I trademarked it just now, guys. Uh -huh. It's been trademarked. Uh -huh. Epic gardening. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna try the spicy first. So we work with local farms. Yeah. Um, and then we have a local co packer. Okay. That makes Got the it. salad dressing. So all of them use our basil, and that's kind of the foundation for them. Mm -hmm. um, and they're never cooked. So they're all fresh salad dressings and uh, oh, no. just low sodium, um, low sugars, just mm -hmm. good stuff you actually wanna eat. So I was blown away that you said 98% uh, lettuce in the country yeah. uh, comes from. California and Arizona. Yeah. Um, do you sell? Can I buy this in California? Because we're both in California. You can't, you can't. buy it. No. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Does it go the other yeah. way around yet? We're not quite there. Okay. Because um, it would go counter to the mission. Right now, at least. Where we're at right now, I, th I think it's a little different than lettuces because yeah. these are highly perishable. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're really focused on we're growing this produce in New York yeah. and we're distributing to New York, some areas of New Jersey, some areas yeah. of Connecticut. Like prove the this model out too locally and then scale that too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're open to it. It's been doing really well. The pesto, um, it was kind of this like fun side project that we started and it just really took off. So, so super good. And for us, it's really just been from the beginning about just like local, mm -hmm. knowing, like having transparency, literally we're in a glass house, yeah. um, That's a good point. about like how we're growing, where we're growing, who are the people growing your food. Yeah. Um, and I think the full circle. Yeah. I think yeah. consumers have really appreciated that and it's built a lot of trust in our brand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're good. I'm good? Yeah, okay. Me. Yeah, you? Yeah. Any yeah, greens in your teeth? You're okay, I All would right. say. It's been really awesome. It's been cool to see how like a local model scales and sort of has its own piece. You know, like I love local farms, I love small farms, I love farmers markets, but something like this solves a really cool problem in an urban environment that like a small farm just wouldn't, you know, in my opinion at least. Yeah. Uh, so it's been cool and... Thanks how, for coming by. Thank Thanks you. For yeah, thank you. sharing this with your, your friends. And, and how can people like hit you guys up, how can they find you? Yeah, so follow us on um, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter at Gotham Greens, check out yep. some scenes from our other farms as well. So three in New York, one in Chicago, and mm -hmm. a bunch more to come along in yeah. the next year. Um, and so you guys, yeah. do you guys do tours at all of them? So they can kind of um, find out, or? We eventually will be. Okay. Um, this is really like the hub of doing the farms. Okay. The Gowanus so is the Gowanus hub. location in Brooklyn, New York. Um, yeah. But there will be more to come. Okay, Yeah. cool. Cool. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks, guys. If you like more stuff like this, I'm trying to do like more tours and also stuff in my own house. But you know, I just want to get out there and like see other people too. So if you know anyone, let me know in the comments. I'll leave all their links in the comments. Perfect. And good luck in the garden. Keep growing. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Later. I always gotta do that. Yeah, I gotta like just before it like up. improv shows and stuff. <laughs> I would like slap my face. Yeah. I don't know. It just gets you. Shake Everyone it out. has a thing. You know? Shake it out. All right, that jacket did not fit, Kevin. But it was a good try. Having a nice little snack here after the tour.